Okay, folks, good morning. Good morning. So as we are just starting to come together for our time this morning, I'd like you to make sure, first I want to welcome you, and I'd like you to make sure that you have a little clear space at the wall. We're just going to do a little bit of work at the wall today. And then I'd also like you to make sure you have space on the floor. We're going to do a lot of stuff on the floor today. Um, you might want to have a chair nearby. You're going to want uh, all your balls. Always have some blankets or pillows or something to support yourself when we're on the floor. And again, you might want to have a chair nearby just for stability as we start our movements. So settling in, looking around your space, seeing that you have all of your things. And then let's just take a moment. Of course, if someone could let me know that you can hear me, since I don't see things in the chat going, we can't hear you. <laughs> I kind of make an assumption that you can hear me, but if you wouldn't mind letting me know, that'd be super helpful. And once I know that, then we will get started with class this morning. Dun, dun, dun. Couple of deep breaths, let's see. Yes, you can hear us, thank you. Thank you so much, I appreciate it, thank you. All right, so as we bring ourselves together for our time this morning, I'd like you to just bring your hands to your heart center for a moment and bring some just loving kindness and tenderness into your own self and your own heart. <sighs> Take a couple of sighing breaths. Sighing, that vibration in the back of the throat, stimulates the vagus nerve, which is the nerve that is responsible for shifting you from stress into relaxed mode. So we want to shift into relaxed mode. Sighing is a way to help us do that. So hands to the heart, just bringing some care into your own self and a couple of sighs. Ah. Uh. And then visualize yourself moving well, moving easily, doing the things that you like to do, riding your bike, hiking, just walking around the neighborhood, dancing, picking up your kids, whatever the things are that you do that you love to do. See yourself moving through your day with ease, with dignity, and with no pain or dysfunction. Getting that picture of yourself in your mind. Ah, great. Release your hands, open your eyes, come to stand nice and tall. You might want to use a hand on a chair and start swinging your legs. And I'm going to introduce you to what we're going to be working on today. So last week, you'll recall, we did some lower belly stuff. And we worked in the inner thighs and the outer hips, those glutes, a lot of windshield wipers. Today, um, we're going to be working in a little bit of the hip flexors, hip extensors, some folks with hamstring tension, knee pain, hip flexor tension, um, low back pain. So we're going to kind of bundle all of those together in today's class. So switch sides, swing the other leg. Because imbalance in the hip flexors and hip extensors can cause all of those things. So right now we're swinging our legs through flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension. So we're going to be balancing the muscles that create this movement today so that we can feel well in the low back, hips and pelvis, around the groin, and in the knees. Ah, good. So I'd like you to shake your legs out. Shake, 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 shake. Other side, shake, 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 shake. I'd like you to bring your arms up overhead. I want you to do a little bit of jump, getting some circulation going. This is a really good for your lymphatic flow, boosting your immunity, shaking the arms. Little jumps for five, four, three, two, and one, inhale, shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, sigh and drop. <sighs> one more time, inhale, lift. Exhale, sigh and drop. <sighs> okay, I want you to bring your hands to the wall. 
or to your chair, either one. I'm gonna bring my hands to the wall and I'm gonna tilt this camera just a little tiny bit. So, because I want you to see this lunge. We're gonna to come to the wall and we're gonna step the left leg back and the right leg forward just a few inches away from the wall. Stretching the calf. This is hip extension. If you have hip flexor issues, you might be feeling this like around the groin. I just want you to notice where you feel that. Press that heel down into the floor. Lengthen your spine up toward the sky. Little push back, little tiny back bend, pushing the heel into the floor, pushing the balls of the toes into the floor. And then we're gonna step the right leg back and lift it up behind us in a big hip extension. Lift. And then we're gonna step it forward, lift the chest, step the right leg back, lift, hip extension. Step the right leg forward one more time, little lunge. And then right leg back, hip extension. Drop the right leg in. Left foot comes toward the wall, right foot goes back. So you got your lunge. Lifting the chest and you can, you know, you might be like this. You might be more like this, closer to the wall. And then you could just step back as you need to lift that leg. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the right leg back. Right heel presses into the floor. Lifting and lengthening, you're feeling that stretch through those hip flexors on the right side. Pressing heel and balls of the toes into the floor. Pushing the left foot into the floor. Lengthen the spine, maybe a little arch here. Maybe a little back bend. I'm gonna step my foot back. And then we're gonna swing that left leg through, lift it back, hip extension. And then we're gonna bring that left foot back to the floor. Lift up, stretching the hip flexors on the right side. And then we're gonna strengthen the hip extensors on the left side. One more time, step that left leg forward. A little arch. And then stabilizing with the wall. Back with the left leg. Drop the left foot. Walk in. We're gonna do a little quad stretch to check. So, right hand to the wall. Left leg bends. If you can catch that left foot, you're gonna grab that left foot and push the top of the foot into the, the hand. Now, if you can't catch the foot and you're not flexible enough to do so, I'm gonna show you this option. Okay, on the chair. Mm -hmm. Not my favorite setup, okay. And you can bring that foot to the chair and then lean your butt back. And that's gonna stretch your quads, okay? So see that, you lay your leg on the chair and then lean, sit back, and that's gonna stretch your quads. Otherwise, you're gonna grab the top of that foot. Let's see if I can see it in there yet. Oh. And you wanna push the foot back into the hands a little bit. Push the foot back into the hands a little bit. And with that pressure back, pull the heel into the bum and then lift the knee up and back behind you. That drives it more at the groin, yeah? And then release <clears> the <throat> other side, bend the right knee, grab the, grab the right foot. Push the foot into the hand or the foot or the shin into the chair if you're using the chair, lifting your chest. Start to pull the heel back in towards your bum. Keep a little resistance. Right knee starts to lift behind you. And then release. Now we're gonna do a little standing forward fold and we're gonna get down to the floor. So I'm gonna recommend you do your standing forward fold this way. I want you to come <clears throat> to the wall and let your butt come to the wall. Come into the wall, butt to the wall. <clears throat> Separate your feet a little wider than hip distance apart. Now your chair could be here, and this could be your forward fold right here. 
<sighs> Pressing your feet into the floor, feel your legs engage as you do that. Then walk your heels back toward the wall and push the backs of your legs all the way up to your butt to the wall if that's possible for you. If not, just keep your feet forward and the knees a little bit bent. That's totally fine also. You don't have to use the chair. You can just bring your fingertips down to the floor. You could step your feet in closer. Just see if, you, if it's possible for you to get your heels and your butt to the wall. Then bowing in. Take three breaths, please. If your heels are at the wall, push your heels a little bit into the wall. Just that little bit of engagement. And then you're gonna walk yourself out of that and we're gonna come to the floor. All right. Constructive rest <clears throat> for those of you who have done this before with me. We're going to go into our constructive rest. And constructive rest means knees bent, feet on the floor. Knees bent and feet on the floor. This is the number one way to begin relieving tension in your hip flexors. We're going to talk about that for just a moment. <clears throat> Everybody getting down on the back, knees bent. Feet on the floor, big giant belly breaths. The psoas muscle is the largest of the hip flexors. <clears throat> and the psoas attaches to the front of the spine and the sides of the spine, comes down into the femurs. And it's a hip flexor, it draws the thigh toward the chest. It's also your curl up, I'm scared muscle. So any stress that you feel in your body creates a contraction in the psoas. It just does. And the psoas goes through the diaphragm, the respiratory diaphragm. So when you breathe big in your belly, the diaphragm is literally massaging it on the inside. And I have some clients who can get themselves out of back pain in about two minutes just doing this. Getting on the back, knees bent, feet on the floor, constructive rest, belly breathing. Two more, please. One more belly breath. Now, as you exhale, I want you to hug your thighs toward your shoulders. So the knees toward the shoulders, not the knees together. I want the knees a little wide and you can grab onto the backs of the thighs or you could grab onto the shins. And what I want you to notice is, do you feel it pinching at the groin? If you do, widen the knees a little bit more. That might take some of that pinchiness out. And I just want you to notice how that feels. Right now you're stretching glute max, which is one of our hip extensors. And there's an interplay between glute max and the hamstrings and those hip flexors, all the hip flexors. So we're just gonna hug in for a moment, take one more breath in your belly. <sighs> Great, I'd like you to roll onto all fours. You can put a blanket under your knees if that feels good to you. It always feels good to me to have a little blanket under my knees and set this back a little. Do, do, do. Okay, we're going to go into all fours, do a little bit of cat cow. And then we're going to do um, into what I call rocking lunges. I'm going to show you a really nice way to um, Stretch your hamstrings on the go, and it's a great movement break. Rocking lunge is a great movement break. So we're going to start with this cat-cow, also a great movement break to take throughout your day to just kind of reset and get your tissues sliding on each other. Inhale, tilting, looking forward. Exhale, tuck. One more time. Inhale, tilt, look forward. Exhale, tuck. 
come to neutral spine, we're going to step the right leg forward. If you've got yoga blocks, you can use your yoga blocks and step your right leg forward. If you don't have yoga blocks, just have a chair. You can use your chair, placing it right there on the side, and then you can use that as a way to support your body as you move through your lunges. Since that chair really takes up a lot of space in the picture, I'm going to use my yoga blocks, but you can see how you could use the chair. Okay, we're going to go right leg forward. Left knee is back. And then we're going to rock back, lift the toes, and come forward. Notice I'm not having you stay in either position for a long time. That is really on purpose. So I find if there's a lot of tension in the body, if you use long-held stretches, it really just kind of freaks the tissue out, and it doesn't want to, the tissue won't release with a long-held stretch or a strong pull on the stretch. That's why so many people injure themselves in yoga or when they're trying to stretch. More often, people injure themselves when they're stretching. <laughs> um, than when they're actually doing their sport, or often they do. And then we're going to switch sides. As we come back, we're just going to bring that right foot back. Left leg comes forward, rocking lunges. Great, great little practice to do, a little movement break to do in your day to bring a little communication between the hip flexors and extensors, get some hydration in the tissues again, and help everything to stretch and be free without yanking on it or tugging on it. Last time forward. This time as you come back, that left knee is going to come back. Put your blocks off to the side. And I would like for you to grab your soft ball. Soft ball. So we're going to do... Um, some glute max rolling and releasing into hamstring rolling and releasing. Those two, the hamstrings and glute max, are the hip extensors. We're going to do that, and then we're going to check that lunge stretch and see how those hip flexors feel after we release the extensors. So, soft ball, glute max holds its points low in the buttocks. So right at the bottom of the pelvis is the sitting bone where the hamstrings attach and glute max runs over that. So we're going to find the sitting bone and we're going to circle around the sitting bone on the floor. And then we're going to go just above it and go in toward the center of the buttocks and explore. That's glute max. Then we're going to go down the hamstrings. Okay. Hip extensors. If you're having hip flexor issues, and several people who responded to the survey said they were having hip flexor issues, this you want to often begin in the extensors. So stretching the legs out in front of you, getting the ball underneath the right side at the sitting bone. Feel the sitting bone and get the ball right on it. Then you're going to lean back, bend the knees, and circle around the sitting bone, oh, I love it. <laughs> Circle around the sitting bone with the soft ball. Good morning to all y'all. See some good morning messages. Welcome, welcome, glad you're here. Glad we're together. Circling, circling. Now you might find, start to notice, right? Oh circling around that sitting bone toward the top and a little bit toward the inside is tender. That's glute max trigger points right there. So find a tender spot and I'm going to show you where I am. I'm right, right to that inside of the sitting bone. Inside and up high and still in the pelvis. I'm not down on the thigh yet, right? on the back of the thigh. So getting in there, maybe do a little rocking. Ooh. Ooh. Really low in the buttocks. I'm just spending a little, a few more moments releasing glute max. You could play with little knee pulses.
Just pinning the tissue and then moving around. One more breath here. And now we're going to slide the buttocks over, get the ball just below the sitting bone, and then lay down some weight right on. So that's the hamstring tendons as they're coming up to attach into the sitting bone. You might need to have your blocks or, or your chair or something nearby to help support you. You might want to move that left leg out of the way. And you might also need to just sit back. Okay. For more pressure, you want to lean forward and bow forward. So the more that you lengthen forward, the more of a pull you put on those hamstrings. So find what works for your body. And we're still using the soft ball because we're in the tendons. I don't recommend you use a firm ball of any kind ever into your tendons. So we're just going to kind of rock a little bit, giving a little stretch through there. If we use a really firm ball, we might actually aggravate tension in the hamstrings. If we use a firm ball in the tendons, I should say. Don't want to push hard in tendons, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, great. Okay. We're gonna move off that ball, stretch the legs out in front of you for a moment, lift your butt flesh up off the floor, lengthen through your spine, a little tiny stretch break, press the heels into the floor, bow forward. Let's see if you can feel a difference between those two sides already, I sure do. And then we're gonna spend a little bit of time in the hamstrings with a firmer, Ball. So take that larger myofoam ball, it's green or it's blue, whichever one you have. And then we're just going to go side to side. It's a really quick, um, great, effective way to release the hamstrings. We're just rolling side to side on those hamstrings. If your wrists bother you, you can be down on your elbows. It's going to be less pressure in the ball or you can just kind of sit forward. That's gonna put a little more pressure in the ball. So the hamstrings tend to hold their tension from midway down um, from the pelvis toward the knee. So get that ball kind of a right about halfway between that sitting bone and the knee and lay into that ball. And maybe you wanna kind of wiggle the leg forward and back. Maybe you want to bow in. I want you to find a way that your body is kind of drawn because different bodies need a little more movement. Some bodies just need the stillness because it's like, what is going on in there? <clears throat> Some folks do really well sitting up on a block and bowing forward or sitting up on a block and then putting the ball on a block. So that way it's a little bit easier to perhaps to, to move your body or you can put that box there, sit up on some blankets and put your box that your tools came in. So again, finding ways for, to work with your body. I want you to just find a spot where you're gonna sink in. Maybe there's some tenderness in there. Whatever position you're in, I want you to sink and hold and take three breaths. Uh, great, we're going to move off that ball, do a little more side to side. Great. Move off the blocks or whatever you're sitting on. Stretch the legs out in front of you, hip distance apart. Flex the feet, toes up to the ceiling, move the bottom flesh up and away from the sitting bones. Sit really tall. Hands out to the sides, fingertips to the floor. So to stretch in the hamstrings, what you need to do is tilt the pelvis. If the pelvis isn't tilting, then it's not stretching. That's not stretching the hamstrings. Excuse me while I adjust my head. <laughs> so lengthening through the spine, tilting the pelvis. It's the tilt of the pelvis that pulls those hamstrings. 
Now see if you notice a difference. Take one breath. And before we do this other side, I want you to get down on your back and hug in. Now my right side where we just rolled, it feels like it, it drops much more easily. That glute is releasing now and that right knee, that right knee drops further than the left. So just kind of check and notice, see if you have any difference yet in your body. I don't feel quite the same pinching at the groin as I did before. So now we're gonna do all of that on the left side. Grab the soft ball. We're gonna release glute max and then the hamstrings, hip extensors. Find the sitting bone, there it is, right on the floor. Lift up, get the ball right under the sitting bone. Use the soft ball. You don't want to use a firm ball on bones or ligaments. And most of the time on tendons. And then circle around. You're kind of tracing the sitting bone with the soft ball. Noticing, check that upper area, the medial kind of toward the midline of your body. Is it tender around there? Yes, it is probably gluteus maximus. You could have your chair so the third time you can use the chair. You can always use your chair to support yourself if you need. So just have your chair or an ottoman or something nearby since you're home. And find a way to just take care of your body if this is hard on your upper body. Find a little tender spot in glute max down by the sitting bone and just take a couple of breaths there. So hip extension, when the legs don't move, tucks the pelvis under. So if you're sitting and you slouch or you sit on a couch or you ever tuck your pelvis under when you're sitting or round forward ever, glute max and the hamstrings are gonna get um, short and sticky and create a constant pull on your hip flexors. Okay, we're gonna start circling around again. And then we're gonna go just in front of that sitting bone. So slide the butt back, the ball comes forward just in front of the sitting bone we're gonna just kind of sink down on it. This is also, you know, you might need a little more pressure, a little less pressure in the ball. That's why you have a pump. You could kind of take a little air out or put a little more in as needed. Sinking down, just kind of stretching across those tendons, a little bit of pressure, soft ball in the tendons. Tendons feel safe, they're okay. If you have a really firm ball in here, there's little sensory receptors in the tendons that make the muscle contract if the tendon feels threatened. That's what happens when you get, when the doctor hits your patellar tendon right below your knee and they hit it and your, <laughs> your knee kicks, right? It's exactly what happens. A firm, hard pressure on the tendon makes the muscle contract and it makes those quads contract and makes your leg kick. So don't use a firm, hard ball, especially in your tendons. Ah, good. Now we're going to start bringing that ball down. Now I'm going to go for that firmer ball again. Now that I'm away from the bones, coming about halfway down into those hamstrings. So I'm going to show you another couple of ways to work with this. You could lean back against the wall. I'm just doing side to side, separating the lines of the hamstrings from each other, hydrating the tissue. Hmm. Good. So this is one way to do it. You could just kind of lean back against the wall and run your hamstrings over the ball. Another method, if you're really flexible, is to separate, bring that right leg back so that you can lean forward. That's going to be a big pressure and a big pull on those um, on the hamstrings and a lot of pressure in there. 
Uh, another option, if you're less flexible, is to sit up in on a block or on some pillows and use your box or your block to support that ball and bring it up to your tissue since now you're elevated off the floor and then it might be easier for you to drop that other leg down. So lots of options. Oh, there's a little tender spot. Play with the angle of the thigh, kind of dropping the foot out, brings you to the outer hamstrings, dropping the foot in, gets you to the inner hamstrings. In a moment, we're gonna just let the ball sink in. So find maybe a spot that's kind of calling your attention. There's often one spot that maybe feels a little more tender than others. Or like, ooh, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. So pick a highlight, pick one spot and kind of go for it. Sink in, bow in. All right, we're gonna release that. Move off the, off the ball, put the stuff off to the side. Lay down on the back, hug the knees. Again, one more time, we're just gonna hug those knees and see if there's a difference. Now my left knee is dropping in as closely as my right. Still have a little tiny bit of pinching, but not very much at all, I'm wondering how you're feeling. I'd like you to bring your hands down to the floor, straighten your legs up and just kind of shake your legs out a little bit. Ah, feet to the floor, one big breath in the belly. Ah, okay, we're gonna get into a hip flexor and a pelvic tilter. We're gonna lay on the side to do that. We're gonna release a muscle called the iliacus. So make a pillow for yourself. Okay, check this out. Iliacus lines the inside of the pelvis. It lines the inside of the pelvis. I'm gonna come close to the camera and show you. So we have two sides of the pelvis. You can find the points of your pelvis right here, okay? And right here, the bony like nubs right on the front. And then the pelvis comes up and around like that. Iliacus lines the very inside of the pelvis. So what we're gonna do is lay on our side. It's one way to do iliacus release so that we can get our thumbs up in there and help that muscle. This is a, this muscle tilts the pelvis forward and it can be in a little push pull with those hip extensors that we just released. And it can be, um, an un, unthought of cause, even of knee pain, back pain, all kinds of stuff. So you, I'd like you to just start by laying on your right side. Take your left hand and find that bony prominence at the front of the pelvis. And just take a breath, right? So find the side of your pelvis, the top rim of your pelvis. And then you're going to get your fingers. Here's the bony nub of the top of my pelvis. I'm gonna hook my fingers in and then up. That's it. You're just gonna take a thumb, the opposite thumb, find that bony prominence at the top of the pelvis, and then slide your fingers over the top of it and then push the thumb like you're trying to push the inner rim of your pelvis. And take a couple of deep breaths. Just right over that edge, you're gonna find a little bit of tenderness. So we're gonna take a couple of breaths. I'm gonna come bring the camera closer so that you can see more specifically what I'm doing. Let's see if I can, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's that top of the pelvis, get the thumb over and try to hook right in. And I'm, my pressure is to the edge of the pelvis. Ooh, and then you could do a little tilt and tuck while you're doing it. Iliacus. 
play with that. Watch this section over and over again. You're going to want to be able to release that iliacus. Let's switch to the other side. There's several ways to release the iliacus. This is a really, um, I find this is a pretty easy way for folks who have never touched this muscle before to find it. And when you lay down on your side, the belly moves off and out of the way. So it can make it a little easier to access. So now, now we're laying on the left side, right hand up at the top of the pelvis, finding that very front point of the pelvis, finding that very front point, there it is, taking the thumb, thumbs, opposite thumb, sink down and then hook in, try to hook into that top rim of the pelvis, like along the inside. Ooh. And you could tilt and tuck here. Just trying to hook in to the inside of the pelvis. Just a couple more breaths here. Little tilt and tuck. Iliacus. This is Soaz's best friend. Soaz and Iliacus are like buddies, super buddies. Uh, tender, right? If you've never touched this muscle, it might be freaking out a little bit. So we're not gonna do too much. <laughs> we're just gonna let go, take a deep breath. It takes a little finesse. Once you get it, you'll get it. And then you'll always wanna do that every once in a while. And I'm gonna link another video to help you find it in a different way when we send this uh, recording out. All right. So now we wanna work in some psoas points and around the groin for the other hip flexors. <laughs> so I want you to get, after we do that, then we're gonna just do a little quads and roll around on the floor for a little while. So got the soft ball. We're gonna go back into the belly. So psoas and that muscle we just touched, iliacus, join together, go through the groin, and then right at the center of that groin line, dive down to the femur. So if you have that groin pull, and several of you mentioned you're having groin pull or hip flexor tension right there, this is this is for that, okay? That iliacus release is for that. And now the psoas, the psoas has two main points, one right next to the belly button and one right in that midpoint along the groin. So we're gonna get the ball <clears throat> right in the belly button and we're gonna rock gently side to side sink in on either side of the belly button to get the psoas, then we're gonna come down along the groin and get it right there. So <clears throat> coming down onto your belly, ball right in the belly button. And just kind of keep, your, keep yourself lifted for a moment. Get the ball right at the belly button and sink just for a moment. Take a couple breaths. You can put blankets under your elbows if that helps you. Okay. And then now you're going to just rock a little side to side. Right at the belly button, rocking side to side. Now I'm going to get that ball right off to the right side of the belly button. Just off center, right off the belly button and start to sink. You might already feel that there's tension there, that it's a little bit tender. You might lay all the way down. That might be too much for you. So you come back up. You might lay down. You might lift the leg. That's going to drive that psoas into the ball. Find the way that your body is going to let you in. It takes a long time to be able to get to this point. I have some students in this class that have been doing this rolling work with me for like 10 years. So, you know, y'all, you go ahead and do that leg lift if you want. But if you're just learning, if you're just starting, just, just let the ball sink in. There's a lot of nervous system tissue here in the belly and you don't want the, the, that nervous system tissue to kind of freak out. So right next to the belly button. And then now we're gonna lift out. We're gonna go off to the center again. Take a big breath. Main psoas points right here, deep behind the belly button on either side. So now we're gonna scoop to the other side. Okay, so now my ball started in my belly button. 
And then we went side, 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 side. And then I sank just to the right of it. And now back to the center. And now I'm going to sink just to the left of it. Okay. Ball in the belly. Scoot over to the right. Sink down on that left side. Uh, you can choose how far down you go. Maybe you want a leg lift. Maybe you're just sinking and breathing. Some days might be different than others. Maybe you did the leg lift a few days ago, but now your body doesn't want that. Listen to the messages of your body. Take one more breath here. Come back to center. Roll down to about the pubic bone where we were last week. Let the ball sink in there. Lift your chest, look forward. What you'll find is that you do that belly release every once in a while, you're gonna, you won't have that low back pain. So as refers directly into the low back along the lumbar spine. So now we're gonna get the second psoas point. Here's the groin line. That second psoas iliacus point is right in the center. You can feel the bundle of quads. We're gonna get right into that groin. So I want you to just get the ball along the groin and just kind of rock side to side on it. Okay. okay, get the ball right in the groin. I'm just gonna rock a little bit side to side. Feel the edges roll along the groin. For some folks, it's not quite enough pressure. I don't recommend a really firm ball in here once you get really used to the rolling, maybe, but what can help is that box or a block. Get the ball up on that, and that's going to lift. Now we're talking. <laughs> now we can get that ball right in the center of the groin. And then we're going to come just off the groin, right in the center, sink in. That is so as iliacus point, they join together and dive down under that groin and then in deep into the femur. So do you wanna do some leg lifts here? So as iliacus point, so as point number two. Take one more breath. Maybe just kind of roll around side to side on those quads, upper quads. We're going to come back to those in just a moment. Ah, oh, so good. We're going to go ahead and do that second so last point on the other side, and then we're going to do some movement, kind of reset our bodies, right? Because that's a lot of information. So here it is again. Here's the grind. Here's the bundle of quads and stuff kind of right at the top. We're going to get the ball right in the center of that groin line and go side to side. Putting that ball on the block adds a little bit more pressure, but you're still using the soft ball. So it's not going to damage any tissue or cause any, any problems. We're going to get the ball up on the block or up on the box, right along the groin. I'm just rocking side to side. Breathing, honoring your body, listening for the messages. And then staying right up at the groin, just slightly down onto that very upper thigh, sinking in, finding a little tender spot right there. First, relax everything. Can you just relax everything and sink? Relax your jaw. Notice your breath. Did it get up high? Can you bring your breath back down to your belly? And maybe a little lift. You can try it. And if your body says no, don't do it again. So we're like pinning, it's called pin and stretch. You pin the point and then stretch and lift. 
Uh, and then we're going to go side to side, the very top of the thigh, top of the quad there. Side to side with that soft ball. Uh, all right, we're going to lift off and we need to go right into some cat cow. So all fours and on your all fours. Hands to the floor, tilt and tuck. Tilt as you inhale, tuck as you exhale. That should feel freer. We've released the muscles that tuck so the tilt should be easier. And we've released the muscles that tilt so the tuck should be easier. I'd like you to come to neutral, wag your tail side to side. And then we're gonna go into two rocking lunges on either side. So using your hands can be on the floor or you're up on blocks or you have your chair to support you, okay? So we're gonna come right leg forward, left leg back, rock, rock, forward and lift. That feels so much better. Great, and we're gonna switch sides just a couple times. It's really good after you do rolling to move your body. Rock back and tilt forward and rock back. Step that leg in. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of rolling in the quads and we're gonna come up to stand and do one of the quads which lays below the iliotibial band. I wore these pants so you can see this is like an iliotibial band on my pants. We're gonna roll along there at the wall because anyone who's ever tried to roll that area on the floor knows how horrifically painful it is to do that. So I'm gonna start with a, I'm gonna use the firmer, larger ball. Um, and we're just gonna roll around the quads and then we're gonna focus See where that stripe is along the out seam of the pants? We're gonna be just a little bit inside that. So we're gonna roll around. You can use your soft ball if you need, okay? So we're gonna roll around that and I'm gonna show you that little bit of quad work and then we'll grand finale with some quad work at the wall in that iliotibial band area. So coming down to the floor, getting in that ball, back where we just were, but more to the outside than to the inside. Left knee bends off to the side. And you have that blanket, you could support that left knee as it rests off to the side. So I'll show that here. Right leg stretches back, left knee can go to that support where it's off to the side so that the inner knee isn't being compressed on the floor. Now we're taking this ball and we're just going to kind of roll all around on the quads. Rolling, rolling, rolling all around on the quads. And you could even sweep your legs side to side like we did with the hamstrings. Rock yourself up and down. And I want you to start focusing on this upper area. So remember I said we're gonna be just to the inside of that band. So I'm not straight to the front and I'm not straight to the side. I'm like halfway between the two. So here's the thing. To do that, we're gonna bend the knee and drop the foot a little bit out to the right. So under the right th left thigh, way up at the top, kind of near where we just were in the groin, but now we're on that kind of mountain of quad tissue. Bend the knee. Drop the foot out to the right a little bit and slide your body to the left a little bit. So notice that my ball is not on that iliotibial band line, it's just in front of it. And there are two very, very tender points up here. You might decide that the softball is a much better idea for you. 
Ooh, find a spot, real tender spot. You can always put your elbows on blankets. You know, take care of yourself. If you're feeling uncomfortable, see what you can do to shift it. And you can ask questions also. And then bend and straighten the knee. You're on a tender spot. You're breathing in your belly. And you bend and straighten your knee. And then maybe you scoot your body up a little bit. Sink in, same thing. Bend and straighten, bend and straighten, bend and straighten. Uh, awesome. And then we're just rolling around, rolling around those quads. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. Then we're gonna come up to the wall and do along that vastus lateralis. Maybe you have, for your elbows, maybe you have a blanket for the opposite knee. Ball comes down to the top of the thigh. And you just first say, hey, thigh, I'm coming. Here I come for you, okay? So you wanna roll around, give the, the tissue that information. Hey, here I come. And what we also find is that when we first start, everything might be kind of all stuck together. You might not be able to feel the particular tender spots. Ooh. We're gonna get just off to the side of center. To find that, you could bend your knee and drop your foot out to the side. And that dropping the foot off to the side helps the ball get a little bit off center toward the outside of the thigh. You're gonna find a very tender spot in there. It's okay to use the softball here, <laughs> truly. Find a really tender spot, bend and straighten. If you're a knee pain person, this one point might be the cause of your knee pain, especially if it's at the front of your knee joint or you're feeling it deep in your knee joint. This is the spot right here. Okay, and then up and down again. And then often there's an even more tender spot about an inch below that one. There's mine, I found it. <laughs> Foot dropped out to the side, see that ball just in front of that iliotibial band line, and then bending and straightening. Hmm. So important to do this work. This tension starts to build up in the body and it doesn't let go on its own. So we just encourage it, oh, it's so much better. Yeah, and even if it doesn't feel so much better for you, it will over time. Your body gets used to this work and then it's literally a life-changing practice that you can do for yourself at home. So just kind of rolling around the quads generally now up and down, side to side. You can drag that thigh over the ball. And I'd like you to move your butt back, come toward child's pose. So that's a big stretch of all the quads. Deep bend in the knee, butt back, folding in. That stretches three of four of your quads. So just take a break in child's pose. Get a nice lengthening through your low back because we've been doing a lot on our bellies. So we've been arching the back a lot. So let your back kind of round and lengthen here. And two big breaths. All right, everybody, we're gonna make our way up to standing. So you could come through downward facing dog if you like that. You place your hands on the floor, tuck your toes under, walk out your downward facing dog. And then I like to walk my hands back to my feet. So you could step your feet wide, bend your knees, walk your hands back to your feet. And then if you need, your thighs are right there. You can walk your hands up your thighs and come up 
to stand. Now we're coming back to the wall. That was a little crazy. <laughs> I just took you on a little little ride there with the okay. Hi, everybody doing okay? Y'all doing all right? Let's see, you got some good morning. Hi everyone. Okay, so I want you to do some butt kicks. So here's what that looks like, right? So just doing some butt kicks. Get those quads and hamstrings kind of sliding and moving. So butt kicks stretches more the quads and strengthens the hamstrings. We're gonna do that for five, four, three, two, and one leg swings, left leg, just kind of swinging the leg. Just about five swings on each side. Should feel freer, it probably feels really good to stand right now. Make sure I don't kick the wall. There we go, swing. Awesome, all right. Grand finale for the rolling grand finale for the rolling. We're going to roll vastus lateralis, which is that muscle that lays just underneath the iliotibial band, which I showed you on my pants. The iliotibial band goes from the top rim of the pelvis all the way down the side of the thigh and attaches right there below the knee. So there's one of the quad muscles lives right below it. So I want you to put your hand right on the side of your thigh right there, okay? And then I want you to straighten your right leg really strongly and start to lift. I want you to feel that when you when you bend that knee, it's soft, and then when you straighten that leg, you can feel that muscle tenses up, that firms up, right? So I'm gonna use my firmer, larger ball, so the myofoam ball. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this we're gonna start just below the hip joint. So we're on the thigh, and we're gonna step that ball, step into the wall. I'm gonna keep that right foot snuggled right in. So you can see my foot there is kind of snuggled in. And then my left foot can step out, and then the right knee bends a little bit. So from the other side, at left, that right knee bends a little bit, the ball's on the right side, the left leg is out. Now, the more I step the left leg out, the more pressure there is at the wall. So, if you have IT band pain, if you have outer knee pain or knee issues, you might wanna start in close. And then over time, you can start stepping that foot out and that's gonna put just more and more pressure into the ball, okay? I hope that makes sense for you. And I want you to just get right on that upper thigh, not on, there's a bony nub right there, the greater trochanter of the femur, we're just below that. And we're just gonna kind of play with this little spot right here. And you'll find a real tender spot right around there and you're gonna sink into it and just take a couple of breaths. Breaths in the belly. Awesome. We're gonna move down a couple inches. Now it can get real spicy in this area. So I want you to just be cautious, right? So step in. That bigger ball allows, kind of brings the wall to the thigh. So um, the bigger ball tends to work best. Of course, you can use the soft ball. Of course you can. And I want you to find another tender spot. And your tender spot might be just behind that thick tissue. So you might kind of turn your body away from the wall and explore. And find a tender spot, sink in, take a deep breath. And then we're just kind of rolling, maybe bending and straightening, rolling up and down along that vastus lateralis, which is a quad muscle. 
then we're going to bring that ball low. So now if you're having knee pain in the outer knee, um, that you want to spend a little extra time here. We're not right at the knee joint, okay? But we are, I'm going to bring this down to the floor, see if this is going to work, okay? So we are not on the side of the knee, but just above it. So we're gonna get down close right there. And then play with like turning toward the wall and turning away from the wall and exploring just that outer edge. Find a little tender spot perhaps. Couple breaths. And that's it. You know, the iliotibial band area, the vastus lateralis muscle, can hold a lot of tender points. It's going to can feel very tender. So if you have a lot of spots, I recommend that you do this work a couple more times during this week. So let's go and do that other side. So dropping the camera down so you can see. We're gonna go just below the hip, right on that outside. Step the left foot into the wall, next to the wall. Right leg is out now. I'm checking that upper area. Just kind of move the ball around. See, do I find a little spot right here? Oh, there it is. And sometimes you have to just sink and breathe. There might be protective tension around some of your trigger points that you have to kind of give some space for them to soften. Mm. Any of you who have ever rolled your iliotibial band area, really the quads, on laying on a foam roller on the floor, it's so terrible. <laughs> this is the way to do this work. And just checking. Find a little tender spot, checking right behind it a little bit, sink in, take some breaths. And just keep exploring. I'm going to give you about another minute or minute and a half. I want you to keep going down, checking along vastus lateralis. So today's class, we've been working in the hip extensors and then the hip flexors. And I like to pair in opposing muscle groups because if your hip, ex hip extensors are kind of crying out in pain, definitely the hip flexors are just are unhappy also. And often the, the problem that you're experiencing or the tension or pain that you're experiencing in your hip flexors is a direct result of tension in the hip extensors. So we release glute max down low in the buttocks. Oh, my point over here finally just released. And then we, were, we were, did some release work in the hamstrings. Keep moving that ball on the left leg down toward the knee. And we worked along the top of the groin, all kind of hip extensor tissue around there, especially psoas, iliacus on the inside of the pelvis. And then that upper quad, slightly to the outside of the thigh, is also a hip extensor. So quads and hamstrings oppose each other in two ways, one with bending and straightening the knee, and one with hip flexion and hip extension. So really important if you're having any knee issues, hip flexor issues, glute issues, all of that, you really want to make sure you're paying attention to the quads and hamstrings and pay attention to them in the same session that you're doing your strengthening or your releasing work. All right. Uh, we're going to move off that ball. Do some bend and straighten, bend and straighten. Start making it bigger into some leg swings. And we're going to do that on the other side. Getting some of those leg swings going, straight and bend. All right, we're gonna put the ball down and we're gonna come back into 
We're gonna come back into a quad stretch at the wall. So hands to the wall. You can come back to the chair. Also, if you need, remember that chair where you lay the, lay the shin onto the chair. So drop that down a little bit, hands to the wall, bend the left knee, grab the top of the left foot, stand nice and strong and tall with the right leg, push the left foot into the hand, keep that pressure a little bit, and then pull the heel in toward the bum, keep a little pressure back, start lifting that left knee up and back behind you, push back with the foot into the hand. Other side, grab the top of the right foot, or place the shin on the chair, sit back into it, press the foot into the hand, stand up tall, left leg presses in, start lifting the knee up and back behind you. Ah, great, and release. And we're gonna come into our forward fold again, butt to the wall, step the feet comfortably wide, bend the knees, and begin to bow yourself forward. Hands come to fingertips to the floor. So you bend as much as you need to be able to get your fingertips to the floor. And if it's easy for you, then you can walk your feet back to the wall and begin straightening the legs, sliding your buttocks up the wall and walking in toward your body at the wall. So just whatever version of forward fold works for your body. And that might um, look like you just putting your hands on a chair and bowing in a little bit. If your heels are at the wall, press your heels into the wall. Take one more breath. Great. Now, I'm gonna give you an option. I'm gonna show you, because some of you in this class, I don't know personally, and you might be really pretty flexible and be looking for a great way to more deeply stretch your hip flexors and hip extensors. So I'm gonna do splits at the wall. If that made your mind explode and sounds like a terrible idea, you can go ahead and get on your back and do some constructive rest, belly breathing. For those of you who want a little bit more of an advanced um, stretch, we're gonna do this practice of splits at the wall. And I'm gonna see if I can get my whole body, I think that's gonna work pretty well. Okay, so splits at the wall means <laughs> that you start in this way that we just were, and you come forward a little bit, and you take, so my left foot is about a foot away from the wall, you take your right knee, and then start to slide up the, that right leg up the wall. And then you just keep walking. You can, so now I'm getting big hip flexor stretch on the right side and hip extensor stretch on the left side. And you can just kind of find your way into such a wonderful stretch. And then you come forward into like a downward dog kind of thing. Right leg comes down, left leg goes up the wall getting that knee up there, and then start sliding in, walking yourself in towards splits at the wall. Take a couple breaths. <sighs> Walk yourself forward, lower the legs. Isn't that fun? <laughs> That's so fun. Okay, everybody down to the floor for the end of our time together for today. Come down onto your back, knees bent, feet on the floor for constructive rest. Couple of deep breaths in the belly. One more sighing breath. And then on the next exhale, I want you to hug those knees back toward the shoulders, rock a little side to side. Just notice 
Does that feel any easier? Is there less pinching? I hope so. It should feel pretty good. Uh, great. You can straighten your legs up to the sky, point and flex the feet at the ankles a little bit, shake the legs out a little bit. And we're going to do a little bit of windshield wipers, arms out to the sides, nice and slow, a couple times to each side. And then we're going to straighten the legs out and just come into Shavasana for a moment, just letting all of that new information sink into our bodies. Knees up to center, straighten the legs out, let everything relax. your attention into the back of your body. Of course, if there's any back pain at all, you can always support under the knees or keep the knees bent. Hmm. Now I'd like you to start to bend one knee and then the other if the legs are straightened out. And we're going to roll through a tilt. So Exaggerate your lumbar curve, arch your back. From that tilt, we're gonna lift up into just a little bridge pose. You can bring your hands down to the floor. You can cross your hands underneath, just doing a little bridge pose. We're engaging the hamstrings, engaging the glute max, pushing the pelvis up to the sky, and then lowering ourselves back down. Roll through one side and come up to sit. All right, lift this camera up a little bit. Great. So that's the end of our class two, and we have time for a uh, Q and A. If you would like to ask any questions, so a little quick recap: why we did what we did today. We released hip extensors and then hip flexors. And the hip extensors and hip flexors can create a variety of knee problems, knee issues, quad aching, calf aching, hamstring pulls, low back pain, even um, a stuck, having the pelvis like stuck in a tilt or a tuck. So when we balance the, that tensional system, hip flexors, hip extensors, the whole world opens up in our bodies. We can, um, help be on the way to getting rid of all kinds of knee issues, pelvis issues, um, hip flexor issues, all of that. So I hope you found this class valuable and helpful to you. We're going to send the replay to you later. I'm going to attach a link to another Iliacus video where I'm releasing it in a chair on my YouTube channel so that you can play with that. I really recommend that you get comfortable with releasing your iliacus. It is often a problem of knee pain, hip pain, even pelvic pain. So thank you all so much. And I will see you next week. And go ahead and take a moment to type in a question. If you have one, I see a question has come in. Let's see what this says. I have a lot of clicking in my left hip. Is that a matter of practice? That's a great question, Sky. And hip clicking is often a question I get asked. What about this click or a clunk or whatever? So there are a lot of muscles that attach in and around the hip and, and the pelvis and along the sitting bone. I have almost never met a pelvis or a hip that didn't have some little bit of a click because 
there are muscles that circle all the way around and you would have to have a complete perfect balance of tension in the inner thighs, outer hips, hip flexors, hip extensors, um, all of that would have to be in perfect, working in perfect concert. So often there's a little like clunk clunk or whatever, This it will get a lot better and it will help to keep that tissue from hydrating. My theory is that over time, if that doesn't get addressed, if the tensional imbalance doesn't get addressed, then it can lead to drying um, in the hip joint. It can lead to the hip getting, the femur getting stuck in one position in the hip joint, limiting range of motion, um, creating drying and leading to arthritis. So do the practices, keep things as hydrated as possible and as mobile as possible. You may always have a little bit of a click. Sometimes you'll be able to not feel it perhaps, but you'd have to have everything like really dialed in. Um, and so um, I, I don't know that it's 100% possible to keep it. I have yet to see it really, to see a hip that doesn't have any kind of little click. Just like the shoulder, there's often clicking and clunking around the shoulder because the bones are rolling over tendons. So that's gonna happen. Part of it is just the way anatomy is. It doesn't mean that there's dysfunction and there almost always is a little bit of dysfunction in imbalance in all those tissues. So we do the best we can, keep everything moving and mobile and hydrated and reduce the risk of that becoming a bone spur or uh, some sort of arthritis. Um, let's see. And I don't see another question coming in. So do um, send us an email if you have any comments or questions. And next week, we're just gonna continue on our journey. We're gonna move maybe down into the shins and ankles. We've got some ankle instability questions that came in through the survey. So, you're welcome, Sky. So I look forward to working with you again next week. Take care. Have a good week.